Well, we'd like to welcome you to a very special edition of On the Road with Ben Davidson. This is our special Christmas edition. And before we start, we'd like to wish everybody that's listening a very Merry Christmas, especially if you're not with the loved ones that you wanted to be. I have a very special guest in the studio with us today, someone very close to my heart, someone that I've been married to for many, many years, and that is Ruth Davidson. Ruth, uh, welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you at this wonderful uh, festive time of Christmas, a very special time. If you happen to find yourself in a place where you're all alone or you're not able to enjoy Christmas as you usually do because of the world situation, the situation with COVID uh, and all of that. We, we would like to just take this uh, moment to share a few things about Christmas that are important to us. Uh, Ruth, what, uh, what is it about Christmas that is special to you? Christmas is like it's a magical time of the year. It's, 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 it's almost as if a veil comes along or the, either the veil li is lifted and all of a sudden it's like the heavenly uh, strains are, are, are uh, permeating the air and all around us are beautiful ideas and li lights and just so much so much beautiful music and it just also just really lends itself to the spirit of Christmas and even the old and the new like many of the older songs that have been around for centuries and, uh, and the current songs as well. And it just seems to be a real uniting time. You know, the thing that strikes me about Christmas as being a holiday, there are several big religions in the world and they all have their celebrations, but there's nothing quite like Christmas where Christians and non-Christians alike celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And that's quite a phenomenal event that you can go to places that don't really know much about Jesus Christ as being our Savior, and yet they still celebrate Christmas. So it's quite an amazing event, and we hope that you who are listening to us right now are able to revel in the beautiful spirit of Christmas, which brings us to a song that I've asked Ruth to bring a song here to the studio to sing to us. We don't have any instruments other than her voice, so I hope you enjoy this. What song did you choose for us, Ruth? Well, I really like the lyrics in the song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and it speaks of God and sinners reconciled. And to me, that is the core, the heart of Christmas. Okay, well, take it away. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Wow, what a beautiful Christmas hymn. And you might, and by the way, if you're listening to this and you haven't seen our Christmas special, please go to our YouTube channel, which is The Bible For You. You can go to our website, which is www.thebibleforyou.com. That's all spelled out. And you can watch our Christmas special, which we made specially for you. You know, there's one Christmas carol that has always baffled me. Have you ever wondered about the song, the 12 days of Christmas. We were listening to that on the radio the other day when we were diving, driving down the road. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. And we really nice. tuned into the words. What in the world do leaping lords, French hens, swimming swans, and especially the partridge in the pear tree, who wouldn't come out of the pear tree, have to do with Christmas? You know, from 1558 all the way until 1829, the Roman Catholics in England were not permitted to practice their faith openly. Someone during that era wrote this carol 
as a song for young Catholics. It has two levels of meaning. The, the surface meaning plus a hidden meaning known only to the members of their church. Each element in the carol has a code word which the children could remember. So this was a way of getting the Christmas message more deeply into the hearts of children. And here is the hidden message of this song, The Twelve Days of Christmas. The partridge in the pear tree represented Jesus Christ. Two turtle doves were the Old and New Testaments. Three French hens stood for faith, hope, and love. The four calling birds were the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The five golden rings recalled the Torah or the law, the five books of the Old Testament. The six geese a laying stood for the six days of creation. Seven swans a swimming represented the sevenfold gifts of the Holy Spirit, prophecy, serving, teaching, exhortation, contribution, leadership, and mercy. The eight maids of milking were the eight beatitudes that Jesus gave on the Sermon on the Mount. The nine ladies dancing were the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The ten lords a-leaping were the Ten Commandments. The eleven pipers piping stood for the eleven faithful disciples. And finally, the twelve drummers drumming symbolized the twelve points of belief in the Apostles' Creed. So now that you know that this strange song became a Christmas carol, let's take a listen to it and remember what each line in this carol represents.
Well, we hope you enjoyed that song and uh, that it becomes a meaningful Christmas song for you, the 12 days of Christmas, with that secret message which you now know the meaning of. Ruth, is there anything that you'd like to leave our listeners with, a special Christmas message for them before we go today? Well, yes, I was uh, thinking about this today, that um, in this fallen and darkened world that we live in, uh, that sometimes the outlook could not be any bleaker or darker. And yet, it's uh, we celebrate Christmas on uh, nearly the longest and darkest night of the year. And that when we need that light from heaven, that Savior to come, and this is when the whole world is thinking about that Savior born in Bethlehem with that wonderful luminous star over that place where he was born. And we can have that day star in our hearts if we continue to live uh, with all the love that he has given us and share that with others. Thank you so much. And uh, we'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Ruth, is there a PS you'd like to add to that? Yes, there is. There's one more thing that maybe I could specify a little more, and that is that we can have access to that peace, that Prince of Peace, and that Savior of the world by simply asking him into our hearts. And he will give us eternal life and life everlasting. So if you haven't done that yet, if you haven't looked up to the heavens, up to the clouds, or if you're in your room, just call out to God and say, God, if you're real, if you really sent your son on that Christmas day to save us, to give us life and hope, God, if that was you that sent Jesus Christ, please show me right now. Show me. I want to know you. We'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. And even though the circumstances in the world maybe look bleak in many places, and there are many people suffering around the world, our prayers go out to them, our thoughts and any words of comfort that we can send their way or anything else that we can help them with. We love you. And from all of us here at the Bible for you, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.